Well, it's September 16th, and apparently Walmart thinks I want to put up my Christmas tree, eat turkey, and wear my Halloween costume. Today is September 16th, the feast day of two of the great early martyrs of the faith, St. Cornelius, Pope, and St. Cyprian, Bishop. Both gave their lives for their flock. As Jesus said, there's no greater love than to lay down your life for another person. And both of these great saints laid down their life for their people, their flock that they took care of. We know that Pope Cornelius was the Pope in the year 251. He was only Pope for two years before his death. And as you know, every Pope from St. Peter up until about the year 315 were martyred for the faith. The first 33 Popes each gave their lives for Christ and for the church. And we know it was only with Constantine that Christianity became legal about the year 315 after Constantine had seen the sign in the sky of the cross, which said, in this sign, you shall conquer. And he won the great battle of the Milvian Bridge and made Christianity legal in the Roman Empire. That's when most of the persecution ceased at that time. And so at this time, this was, but this was about 50 years before this would occur. Pope St. Fabian had been martyred, and then Cornelius had been elected Pope. And we have some of his ancient writings, so we know the, the growth of the church. According to Pope Cornelius, he said there were 50,000 Christians in the city of Rome at that time, 46 priests, seven deacons, and seven subdeacons. And so we see the growth of the church by this time. Cornelius had to deal with <clears throat> the antipope named Novation, one of the first antipopes, who claimed there was no forgiveness for those who had apostatized their faith during times of persecution. As you know, many Christians were uh, under torture or persecution, had renounced their faith. Maybe they offered incense to the gods or something along those lines. But what happened after the persecution ended? Could they come back to the practice of their faith? Could they come back to confession? Could they do penance for their sins? Novation, the antipope, said no. No forgiveness after a person who had denied their faith. So Pope Cornelius, guided by the Holy Spirit, had to lead the church between the path of rigorism and laxity. The lax would just say, sure, come back, go to confession and be restored. Whereas the Pope said, yes, you can come back, go to confession, but you have to do penance for your sins and be reconciled to the church. So the Pope was very wise and prudent to lead the church in this way. Ultimately, Pope Cornelius was sent into exile and he died probably of exposure or pneumonia. So he is considered a martyr for the faith. And then lastly, Bishop Cyprian, who was martyred in the year 258. He was beheaded on September 14th of that year. He had been from Carthage, <coughs> Northern Africa, and he is born into really a pagan family. He was highly educated, became a teacher, and involved in politics and law and rhetoric. But then as a, he converted to Christianity when he was 50 years of age and gave all his goods to the poor and then um, embraced um, celibacy and became a priest two years later. He was chosen by popularity, even against his own wishes to become the Bishop of Carthage. This is where St. Augustine would eventually become a Bishop as well. And he would govern also by supporting the Pope in his teachings on how to reconcile former apostates back to the faith. So he was then uh, um, ex exiled, but then, as I mentioned, brought back and beheaded in the year 258. That's why we wear the red vestments today to remind us of the blood that was shed by Pope St. Cornelius and Bishop Cyprian, who followed the example of Christ. Jesus would say at the Last Supper, this is my body, which is given for you. The holy martyr said to Jesus, this is my body, which is given up for you. So we pray today, Pope Saints Cornelius and Cyprian, pray for us.